devil to preach a little while, amen, from this Luke chapter 24, amen, and I'm going to set it up for you, amen, we're going to set it up and knock it down, amen, amen, in the name of Jesus, amen. Let us look to God in prayer. Yeah, Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, right now for you. Thank you, God, for all that you do, God. Thank you. Thank you, dear God, that for the mothers in the house, amen. We thank you for them, God. We thank you for the mothers that are not even here yet, God. Yes. Yet, God, but we have praise your form, God, and all that they're doing for your, for your children. And now, God, it's preaching time. And God, I thank you for preaching time. God, I thank you for the opportunity to proclaim a word from on high. And God, because it's preaching time, I pray that you give me the type of anointing that makes preaching easy. God, I pray that you endow me with the type of anointing, God, that will make hearing the word easy. God, I pray that you will bless me with the type of anointing that will make doing the word real easy. And now, God, get me down deep into your well of anointing that I might come up dripping away and preach a word to your people on this Mother's Day. And God, while you're partnering with us in the power of the anointing, we pray that you cover us with your blood and cover us in your covenant with the precious blood of Jesus, that the devil might know whose we are and do not do us good. In Jesus' name we do pray. And let the church say, Amen. 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 As I begin to seek the Lord, Amen, and lay before him on what to preach, Amen, on this Mother's Day, and I began to, to struggle with whether or not I should stay in the sermon series uh, that, that I was in, Amen. And, and the thought came to me, Amen, um, you know, maybe I should preach a real tame, a real cute Mother's Day sermon, amen, and not try to break any new ground or to stir up any of the gifts within the, the women, amen, and the mothers today. You know, you know, I was going to let the mothers enjoy their day by gently rocking in their seats as they read the, 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 the heartfelt thanks for all that they do and the well wishes and the accolades from all of those that appreciate the efforts and the, the responsibilities of motherhood. Um, you know, to be honest, I just thought that maybe, you know, I'll just give a basic cute Mother's Day sermon and, and just leave it at that. But then the Lord began to deal with me just a little bit and I began to realize this. There is no mother I know that is just the basic run of the mill type mom. Amen. See, I'm not talking about intellectually, amen, or even her demeanor. I'm not talking about attitude, looks, her sophistication, fashion sense, amen, cooking skills or housekeeping skills. I'm, I'm not talking about any of that. When I say no good mama, I know it's just a basic, ordinary, run-of-the-mill mama. I'm saying this, that no good mama I know huh, they would not think twice about taking down a bear, amen. If you were messing with one of her children, amen. Any of y'all know mama like that, amen? They don't mind, amen. Don't mind getting down and turning for you, amen. Don't mind going the extra mile. Don't mind standing up in the face of whatever, amen, just for you. And I say, a mother like that don't need a cute sermon, amen. She needs something that she ought to be able to use. Because when you get down like that, amen, you don't need looking for cute. You already got cute. Cause I don't get it twisted. I ain't saying you ain't cute. Y'all so look good to me. I feel like Johnny Gill up here, my, 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 so look good to me, amen, what I'm saying, amen, that you understand that just because you cute, you still got some fight up in you, amen, come on, somebody, somebody know what I'm talking about, amen, and since there is some fight in you, amen, why not preach a word today to you mothers uh, that can help, amen, uh, help you along the way, encourage you to get more power to fight uh, for what and who God has given you, uh, and more power, amen, somebody say more power, amen, uh, more power, amen, to get the job done, uh, so it's for that reason the Lord, did, the Lord didn't need me to give you a basic run-of-the-mill sermon, amen, for you dear ladies uh, are 
are the chosen of God, handcrafted, handpicked, and personally exploited by God to be brought to man and mankind to be a help meet for him and to help him complete his purpose on the earth. Somebody say, preach, pastor, amen, about you, amen. So keep it in line, amen, with the series that we started last week, amen, uh, after the cross beyond the grave. I got a word to challenge all you mothers here today, and that's whether or not you got a biological child or is a child in your life that needs your special brand of God-ordained love. Amen. Are you ready to see yourself as God desires to see you? Amen. After the cross, beyond the grave, where Jesus was buried, and now he is risen. Are you ready? Are you ready to go there in the spirit? Come on, somebody. If you're ready. If you're ready. If you're ready, if you're ready to go there. But well, this is where you'll find, and this is our sermon title, that you were made, amen, for so much more. Somebody say that with me this morning. Made for so much more. And when we begin to look at our text, amen, we'll find in the text, amen, before we go too far, we'll find, amen, some shared traits and characteristics of a good mother, amen, of good mothers everywhere, amen, and the women that have come to the tomb where Jesus Christ was buried. The first thing I'll tell you that these women, amen, uh, you'll find this trait. Uh, they supported Jesus, amen, uh, in his earthly mission for God. Uh, Luke 23 and 49 said that these women, uh, and many of them were mothers, uh, and his own mother, Mary, often followed Jesus uh, from Galilee uh, as he carried the gospel. Uh, not just to hear but, and to be blessed of Jesus, uh, uh, but to be be a blessing to Jesus uh, any old way they could uh, sound like mama to me. Uh, so many in the crowd uh, uh, where Jesus was, uh, they, they, they came just to be seen uh, and to see, amen. Uh, some were there to be a problem for Jesus, uh, to raise questions and uh, poke fun, uh, try, to, uh, try to discredit his ministry uh, and the cause of conflict. Uh, uh, but uh, some were there, amen, by obligation. Uh, after all, Jesus had chosen the devil to be amongst his twelve and a half. But then there was these women, amen. See, they were there for one reason. They were there to support the work of Jesus unto God. Oh, anybody ever had a moment that you were just willing to support whatever it was that you did? I done heard plenty of go ahead babies in my life, amen. Coming from my mama and my grandma and them. Go ahead baby, do the best you can. I don't care what it was. If I had a three-line recitation in Sunday school, I heard my grandma, go ahead, baby. Go ahead and do what you do. If I had a play at school and I was standing in the corner because they made me a tree, so I heard somebody say, go ahead, baby. That's my baby. Amen. Mama was always, a good mama is always there to support. And I can tell I ain't the only one that had that good mama. Anybody had a good mama that go ahead, pay that and you know uh, what I'm talking about. Uh, you see, the Bible says in Matthew 27, it tells us uh, that these women ministered uh, unto Jesus as they served him uh, with purpose and on purpose. Can I tell you, a good mama support you, amen, uh, and she would go through great lengths uh, just to get there. Uh, see, I know, uh, you see, uh, I got a good mama in my house right now. You uh, uh, see, when my son is involved in anything, I normally make it to the event. Oh yeah, I'll get there for the play. I'll get there for the musical. I'll get there for the football game, the basketball game, and the baseball game. But you will hardly catch me in practice, amen. I got other stuff to do. But a good mama be sitting up there in the cold, sitting up there with her, sitting up there in the heat, sitting up there, don't know what they're doing, don't know what's going on on the field, other than she just wanna holler, go ahead, baby, amen. Yeah, 
But good mama will do it, huh? Good mama will make it everywhere, amen. She'll be there for the pickup. She'll be there for the drop off. She'll be there when the coach ain't doing you right. She'll be there when the other parents say you drop the ball. That's my baby, so go ahead, baby, amen. That's all I'm saying. See, that's what good mama do. Like these women, they supported Jesus, amen. And they show up. Come on, somebody. Give God a prayer. Uh, these mothers, like all good mothers, amen, everywhere, uh, not only support, uh, but they'll show up in the good times and the bad. Oh, I see it in these women. Uh, I see the church of a good mother. Uh, and these same women that follow Jesus and uh, support Jesus and minister to Jesus, uh, just not in a, not just in the good times. Uh, you know what the good times are. Uh, uh, can I tell you how Jesus saw good times? You know, a day after, after a successful day of preaching and teaching and healing and delivering, it was a good day. Uh, thank God for another day. Uh, you know, after the walking on the water and the feeding of 5,000, you know the good times uh, Jesus had. But there was some dark days too. Uh, that was when things were not going well. Uh, and the ministry was kind of tough. Uh, you know, there were no legalistic law giving scribes and Pharisees. Uh, or they always were poking intellectual holes uh, in every sermon that Jesus preached, uh, every lesson that he taught. Uh, they were the hellhound on his track, uh, trying to figure out uh, what he was doing, uh, but couldn't understand the faith of the Spirit. Uh, but you know, even though you know they were. It still hurt, amen. It still make you feel sad every time, every now and then. You just need a good mama to stand up for you and to stand up with you, amen. And that's what Jesus found her when he got the bad news that his friend Lazarus died. I believe one of these women was standing right now and said, baby, it's going to be all right. I believe when Jesus tried to minister to the rich young ruler and the rich young ruler walked away from eternal life just because because he wanted to stay rich. Uh, I believe one of these women said, it's all right, baby, it's going to be all right. Uh, you know you're doing a good work, amen. Keep on moving, amen. Uh, the Bible lets us know even uh, in the darkest time of Jesus' life, uh, when he was there on the cross, um, uh, all hanging between earth and heaven, um, uh, the Bible said these women, uh, these women were there, these mothers were there. Uh, I believe uh, they might not have been uh, able to do anything about about his situation. Roman soldiers standing guard with swords drawn as big as in hand. They couldn't say nothing, but I believe, I know from a fact that at any time I've been down, any time I've been afraid, I can remember looking when I was a little boy living in an old house. My house used to make all kind of noise at night, but every now and then I see my grandmama just walking the floor with her five foot one inch self. Ain't bigger than a minute, but I will when I seen my mama. I know that everything was about to be all right. Come on, somebody in the dark time, in the bad time, long and mama around somewhere. My my mother-in-law used to tell me, I want you to know this, boy. I don't know you real good. You from the city and everything, but if you ever do something to my daughter, I don't care how long it take me to get there. You better know I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna be on you. Amen. And I feel the need that 16 years later. Jesus felt the same thing. Yes. His father. Yes. And I ain't mad with God, but this is what God had to do. But yes. Father turned back on Jesus. Yes. Had to. Because of he who he was. Mama said, I ain't got there yet. I ain't turning back. I'm right here at the foot of the cross for you, Jesus. And she was still saying in her spirit, go ahead, baby. Uh, you my baby. Uh, so you got to understand, uh, a mama is a common influence on you. Uh, you just feel better uh, when mama there. Uh, can't nobody rub it uh, like mama can rub it. Uh, can't nobody kiss that boo-boo uh, like mama can kiss it. Uh, can't nobody pat you on the head, uh, hug you up around your neck. Like mama can do it. Amen. Anybody know what I'm talking about? In the good time and the bad. In the happy time and the sad. Can't nobody do it like mama. And the next thing, well, well, the next thing I want to tell you is this. A good mama, like these women were, was willing to sacrifice for you. They sacrificed for Jesus. Watch this. Y'all good mothers will go the extra mile 
to make sure and obey the has your best hand. Amen. Amen. In the Gospel of John, chapter 19, verse 38 through 42, the Bible says, lets us know, that two men by the name of Nicodemus and Joseph of Amalek. Mm -hmm. Say they brought a hundred pounds of spices and aloe and myrrh. It was an embalming ointment for Jesus after he was after he died on the cross. They brought it to anoint the body of Jesus for burial, as per the Jewish custom. Understand this. These items were expensive. And Nicodemus brought enough, they say, to embalm a hundred bodies in the traditional way. But you know, you understand this in Jewish culture and custom. The more embalming ointment that you used on a body, the more respect was given to the deceased. So Nicodemus brought more than a hundred times the amount that he needed. Now watch this. See, this was done prior to placing Jesus' body in the tomb. And who was it that just happened to be looking on and seeing how they were treating our Lord? It was these women, these mothers, these women, amen. And they saw how they took the body carefully down off the cross with care and respect. They saw how they how they wrote the body down in the in the embalming ointments and they wrapped the body in a fine sheet of linen. Now, they saw that. But you know what they said to? They ain't enough for my baby. Amen. All right, all right. <laughs> see, uh, see, that's a mother spirit, y'all. Uh, oh, uh, they ain't, ain't enough for my baby. See, look, uh, I know myself. Uh, I know myself. I tell my wife, Charles, Charles don't need no more of that. So that you can let that go. He ain't got enough. It's enough for now. Uh, but more often than not, mama got some more uh, that she desired to do. I'm going to tell the truth. Uh, they'll pull up a little bit. Amen. I put my wallet back. I put my money down. I put my credit cards away. Uh, shoot, that boy got three pairs of tennis shoes. Shoot. Uh, he, don't need, he don't need the red, white, and black ones. You know what I'm saying? He don't need all that. He got enough pair of jeans. I grew up, I grew up on three pair of jeans. Money to the wind, then the fact that the money again. With the same three pair. Amen. That's how we used to do it. Amen. When mama said, I, I want just a little more for my baby. It was just like that with these women. These women said to each other, see, we see where the body has been anointed for the burial. He's been anointed with a hundred pounds of precious spices. But I just believe they believe that's a, a little bit more. Look, you know, the sun was going down. Somebody said it was late in the evening. And Sabbath was fast approaching. And they they could not get back in time before the Sabbath. So they had to wait for a couple of days until Sunday morning. How many of y'all good mothers here ever had to wait to get your baby what your baby needed? You might have had to wait for that thing to go on sale, but you were going to get what your baby needed. You might have had to wait for it to get back in stock, but you were going to get what your baby needed. You might have had to wait to get it off and lay away. But you were going to get what your baby needed. You might have had to wait for your next paycheck. Amen. But you were going to get what your baby needed. You might have had to wait on your income tax money. But you were going to get what your baby needed. As soon as you was able, you were going to go and you're going to get it. And you're going to bring it back for them. Somebody need to know what I'm talking about. Because with these women, it was just like that. Even though Jesus' body had already been anointed, they wanted to do more for him. So they showed up at the grave site early in the morning. They wanted to do more. I told you already, there was a lot in common between these women and good mothers everywhere. And I believe you don't see it for yourself. I could almost close right there. But if I close right here, uh, that'll be the cute part of the sermon. Uh, that'll be the part of the sermon that maybe you expect. Uh, but can I twist them up just a little bit? Because uh, I believe right now. Uh, see, can I tell you something about me? Uh, as your pastor, uh, I'm a pastor that's going to always seek to feed your spiritual side. Uh, if I got to go through your nature, I will. Uh, but my goal is always to feed your soul. Amen. Uh, I want to show you uh, how you can be better, 
how you can be greater, how you can be stronger, how you can do so much more, even in the spirit of God. Anybody want to do more in the spirit of God? So let me apologize right now if you think I'm preaching two sermons. I ain't mad with you because I might be. But sometimes in the gospel, things get a little complex. And you need to compound this thing so you'll be able to get it all. So you can go where you need to go and do what you need to do. And one of them times is today. Watch this. I'm going to tell you now, these women have been following their natural instincts and motherhood. And even in following, supporting, and ministering to Jesus and sacrificing for Jesus as they worked for a spiritually good result, they did it with the instincts that was passed on to them from Eve in the beginning. Watch, got to walk with me now. Can I tell you, Adam called the woman Eve, the woman that God had given him, called her Eve. That name meant her mother of all living things. So women, you get your motherhood instincts for real. You, you get it honest. You get it from Eve. But you better check this. I understand. Sometimes you got to know not only where you get it from, but you got to know why you got it. Amen. Look at this. Adam did not call Eve Eve until after the, their disobedience. It was after the disobedience. And God pronounced some natural limitations on both of them. Can I tell you, these limitations, they only allow the man and the woman to do so much. These natural limitations only allow them to go so far. Uh, there were strict limitations uh, that affected their natural and their spiritual lives. Come on, uh, right there. Uh, now today, can I tell you fellas, uh, it, it's Mother's Day. Uh, and my aim is to free the mothers. Amen. Uh, now if y'all get free, that's good. Uh, but, uh, but in five weeks, somebody say five weeks. Uh, in five weeks, I got something for y'all too. Amen. Uh, but today is Mother's Day. Can I tell you uh, the limitations placed on the woman in Genesis 3, uh, they were this. There was fear. There was pain. There was sorrow in childbirth. And there was a feeling of over-dependence uh, on a man. Depending on a man uh, more than God. Uh, women don't get mad with me. Uh, it's there in the Bible in Genesis 3, 15 through 21. Uh, see, these were natural limitations uh, that even reached into their spiritual lives. Uh, so let me tell you good mothers out there, uh, just like these women in our text, <laughs> if you rely on your natural instincts as a mother you're going to find that you can only go so far you can only do so much with these limitations but if you walk with me just a little bit further I can take you on to the next level and to your deliverance amen and to your change in Jesus Christ to the natural motherly instincts took these women to an empty grave where Jesus used to be but because they were in a natural mindset, uh, though they were attempting to do good, uh, I showed you all the good uh, that they were doing. Uh, but the natural mindset uh, left them afraid and sorrow, uh, wondering what went wrong, wondering how they could uh, how they could have let it go wrong, uh, and confused uh, uh, what to do about it. Uh, the Bible said in your text in verse four uh, that they were perplexed. Uh, they had to think, uh, they had to be thinking to themselves, uh, what could we have done differently uh, to make a different result? Uh, they had to be thinking, uh, should we have attacked the Roman soldiers to free our Lord? Uh, should we have taken the body of Jesus from the cross ourselves? Uh, they could not have done any of those things. Uh, amen. Uh, what could they have done? Amen. Uh, all they could do, they had already done uh, with their natural motherly instincts, uh, but it was according to the limitations uh, that they, they inherited uh, from Eve. Uh, but can I tell you today, uh, as a good mother, uh, you got more in common uh, with Eve uh, than some limitations. Amen. Uh, somebody need to know this today. Uh, you got more in common. Uh, you can be much more uh, than just uh, a limited mother, uh, but you can have unlimited power, unlimited grace, unlimited results in Jesus Christ. If you're willing to go, if you're willing to move on after
after the cross uh, and beyond the grave. Uh, if you're willing to go beyond that and step into the anointing, uh, you can be more, uh, so much more. Uh, see, God did not create Eve to live in fear and confusion. God did not create Eve to no pain and sorrow. God did not create Eve to be overly dependent on a man. You got to remember you were made for so much more. But God created Eve along with the man to have power, dominion in the earth, to bless the earth, to subdue the earth, and to be fruitful and uh, multiply. Uh, God created the woman uh, to be a nurturer uh, to all things living. Uh, God created the woman uh, to be a help to man, uh, not another burden unto him. Uh, but in order to get to this place, uh, you got to remember uh, what Jesus had been telling you uh, all the while uh, that you were following him, uh, while you were supporting him like a good mother, while uh, you were sacrificing for him. Uh, it was not one-sided. Uh, Jesus was busy uh, giving you what you needed uh, to be able to connect with who you were going to be uh, once you could see Jesus uh, after the cross uh, and beyond the grave. Because uh, that means that if you see Jesus, uh, you see him after the grave. Uh, you see him as the resurrection. Uh, you can see Jesus as the power to validate in you uh, and to bring the past in you uh, and to take you uh, to the next level. Come on, somebody. Uh, everything that he has given you, uh, everything that he's called you to be, uh, every gift that he's given you, uh, he has given it to you uh, so you can be more, uh, so much more. Amen. Uh, he took uh, God placed inside of you uh, a mothering spirit. Amen. Uh, that you can be a bearer of life uh, in Christ Jesus. Uh, it is in you. I, I believe it's in you. Uh, you might not know it. Uh, and let me tell you, you don't need a child only to bring life uh, because you already got life in you. Uh, you just need the Lord Jesus uh, to get it out of you uh, because it was so numb him. Uh, it was so numb him. Uh, it was so numb him uh, that put life uh, inside of you. Uh, so when the woman, uh, they saw the tomb was empty, uh, the natural instincts in them said, it is over. Uh, but the angel said, uh, why seek ye live? The living amongst the dead. And then in verse 6, it says, He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spake it unto you when you were yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered unto the hands of sinful men and be crucified. And on the third day, right again. And the text said, And they remembered, they remembered. In his word. See, look, I told you, I told you that you got more in common with Eve than the limitations. Let me show you like this. What did God tell Eve in the garden? What did God let her know that he would do her? through her, her ability to walk in motherhood. I'll tell you what he said in John in Genesis 3.15. He said, I'll take your seed. Uh -huh. I'll take your seed, the fruit of your womb, and I will defeat and, it, and destroy the, the very thing, the very enemy that has caused you to have to endure all these limitations. I'll take your seed and I'll remove, I'll remove the limitations of your life. I'll take your seed and I'll make it so that you don't have to walk under these natural limitations, but you'll be able to abound, leap over, run through, tackle. Take down, destroy all the limitations in your life. You'll be able to do so much more in Christ Jesus. And I'll take your seed. You got to get it, y'all. To be able to live without limitations because of the seed. Eve was waiting on the seed. The seed didn't come until Christ went to Calvary. But after he was after he died, what do you do with a body? You bury it. Amen. 
What do you do uh, with a body uh, you planted in the ground? Uh, what do you do with a seed uh, you bury it? Uh, what do you do uh, with a seed you plant it? Uh, Eve was waiting on the seed. Uh, guess what? Uh, we got uh, the mothers here today uh, got the benefit of the seed. Uh, the seed was planted uh, and the seed rose on the third day. Uh, the seed was planted uh, and the seed rose on the third day. Uh, and because the seed rose on the third day uh, and the seed got up uh, with our power in his hand, when you came to the cross, uh, mother, you saw him hanging there. Uh, but when you came back to the grave, uh, he was no longer there. Uh, he was risen. Uh, what did that mean for you? Uh, that he took the seed. Uh, the seed became uh, the, the, the remover of all limitations. Uh, you don't have natural limitations on you no more. Uh, so now you can walk in the spirit. Uh, and it is in the spirit uh, as a mother, you can do so much more. You were created uh, to be uh, the lover, uh, the giver uh, of life. Uh, you were created uh, to nurture and sustain. Uh, but you can only do so much uh, in your natural instinct. Uh, you can only go to the jailhouse so many times. Uh, you can only pray uh, so many times. Uh, you can only say it's going to be all right uh, so many times. Uh, of your own mouth, uh, of your own spirit, uh, of your own power. But can I tell you, mom? If you ever want to do more, let Jesus take the limitations off of you. Now, all of a sudden, when you pray, you trust the Father. All of a sudden, when you speak, it's just like God talking. All of a sudden, when you pray, you command him in Jesus' name. How many of you want to go forth and do more? I don't want no limitations on my motherhood. I don't want no, I don't want no stumbling blocks. Because something is out there after my babies. Uh, something is after my babies. Uh, and I'm not going to let it get them. Uh, I'm going to go. Uh, I won't give up. Uh, Sometimes, uh, if you look at this scripture, uh, these women began to remember. Uh, and when they began to remember, they, be, they went to tell a word. Uh, they began to tell the other disciples. Uh, but they looked at them uh, as if they had, uh, if they were telling tall tales. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, uh, when you go on in the spirit, uh, and you have removed the limitations. Uh, you don't care what they think. Uh, you don't care what they say. You don't care how they act. Uh, if the Lord has put a word in your mouth for your children, for your loved ones, you're going to keep on talking. You're going to keep on praying. You're going to keep on visiting. You're going to keep on laying hands. You're going to keep on reminding them that the Lord is good and is worthy to be praised. And as they come on, Peter said, I'm believing. But Peter said, let me go see. Uh -huh. Somebody, because of you, is going to say, let me go see. Mm -hmm. Mom, let me tell you the power that you've got. Somebody going to say, let me go see. Because you wouldn't give up. Because you went beyond the limitations. Mm -hmm. You didn't fall victim to the curse. You move beyond the curse in Jesus Christ. Oh, it was good. You did some. You can do great things in your natural instincts and in your natural mind because God has put a love in your heart. But can I tell you what happened when you allow yourself to go beyond the grave? When you allow yourself to go beyond Jesus being in the tomb? When you allow yourself to be seen of God uh, as God sees you. Uh, see, God sees you uh, as one of his greatest creations. Uh, right. I told you you were handpicked. Uh, you were escorted by God. Uh, you were given the assignment uh, to bring life into the world. Uh, by you, the world is fruitful and multiplied. Uh, I want to tell you right now uh, that if you ever get in your mind uh, that I will be uh, everything God is calling me 
to be. Let it start right here on this Mother's Day. On this Mother's Day early afternoon. I'm going to be everything that the Lord has called me to be. Because somebody looking at me. Somebody is waiting on me. Somebody is seeking after me. Just because I got the mother's spirit. And when you got the mother's spirit, you got a spirit just like God. The spirit of God is within you. And the spirit of God will make sure that everything that you care about, everything that you're loving about, everything that you're talking about will begin to come to pass. Come on and stand to your feet. I got a word for you. I got his gift. Don't give up. Don't quit. Go forth in Jesus' name. Be, be who you are. The song said, be who you are and live the life. I'm going to encourage you today to be the woman of God that God has called for you to be. And if you be the woman of God that God has called for you to be, the world will be changed. The world will get saved. The world will come to Christ. The world will know Christ. The world will fall in love with God all over again. Why? Because you took away all the limitations and you can be who God called you to be. More. So much more. Come on, somebody. Give God a praise right here.